Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Much. Thank you. It's up to you. Remember the time. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, my thanks and, uh, to be here to the president of Kaputska Council and to the Minister of Economic Development, I know, and her team, Gary. Uh, and it's an honor to be here uh, speaking with you this morning. Um, I apologize that uh, I am speaking in English. Um, I was brought up in Northern Ireland, and um, unfortunately, Basque and Spanish was not on the menu <laughs> when I was being educated, so, but I'm trying to catch up very quickly. Um, before I talk about um, where we are going with cybersecurity, um, I have a question that I have been asked to put to the audience. And you are able to vote on this question so that we can get some feedback. Um, the question for you is that thinking about your companies and your products and the size of your market, to what extent do you think you are susceptible to a cyber attack? So thinking of your company and what you do, to what extent do you think you are susceptible to a cyber attack? Now, I'm told that you have four choices uh, in answering from not susceptible at all. In other words, we are very secure. No one's going to get to us. To uh, maybe a little susceptible. Uh, yes, medium to well done as in a stake, or yes, we are very susceptible to a cyber attack. So these are the four opportunities for you to answer, and we'll be analyzing and sharing the information with you at the end. Um, now, technology, I find, is always a challenge, but I'm delighted to see that we have the first um, slide up successfully. And this is our small welcome to a very large issue called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And I'd like to take us back just a little bit to where we came from not so long ago. And if you were in Ireland or you're in the Basque region, this would have been a view that many would have seen not so long ago. Um, and in fact, today, you know, they talk about progress, but um, you get through London quicker in a horse and cart than you will in a car today. So what's that about progress? And then moving on from those humble beginnings, we see the steam engine uh, and, of course, factories now blossoming. We see the combustible engine taking us into another revolution. And then we're into the dawn of the digital age. And I guess one of the messages that people like me have for all of us here, and you, you must feel it, we all feel it, and that is that in those old days, revolutions took a long time. Industry took time to develop. And the public and citizens and businesses were able to develop their maturity with plenty of time and to develop some defenses, perhaps, and to develop engines and petrol tanks and motor vehicles that did not explode and so on. And today, we seem to have lost the ability to keep up with what's happening. We feel, I think, quite vulnerable that uh, technology the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, is zooming on ahead in an exponential growth, and we are sitting here, still back there, and wondering what on earth this means for us, and for our companies, and for our citizens. So we have a big job to do, and I congratulate the Kapuzkwa government, provincial government, for having the vision and the leadership to establish, excuse my expression, the 
um, Industrial Cybersecurity Center. Because I have had the good fortune to speak in many parts of the world about cybersecurity. I started doing it when I was 18 years of age, when I joined the Royal Air Force uh, from Northern Ireland. And we were dealing in communications and security. And I guess I've been growing up with it ever since, which, when you look at me, is a long time ago. Um, so we need to grasp the issue of securing our companies and our citizens from cyber attack. And it's a very silent enemy. You, you, we cannot see the enemy's tactics unless we are cybersecurity specialists and then we can see them on a screen, on the network, intrusions and so on. But for the vast majority of people and businesses, this is an unseen threat and therefore much harder to comprehend. But if I could draw a very difficult analogy, we remember the carpet bombing of the Second World War and of Vietnam, and if you're a company experiencing that, whether you be in London or Laos or wherever you happen to be, it's very obvious that you need to take cover, right? We get underground and we wait till the bombs have passed and we hope that we survive. And today, every business in Kapuzkwa and every other part of the world is undergoing a cyber carpet bombing every moment of every day. And the story I want to take you on over the next 35, 40 minutes is to try and set the scene for the work that the Industrial Cybersecurity Center will do with you in business and with you in academia and with our experts here in Kapuzkwa on technical cybersecurity issues. The leadership that the government, the provincial government has shown will bring all of those communities together for the benefit of business and, yes, of citizens in the region. Um, so I congratulate you on that. We've got a big job to do, and today we're going to start doing it together. Going on this theme of where we've come from and where we're going, we then saw at the turn of the century I feel very t talking about that, you know, it's 18 years ago. Um, we're looking at some of these um, vulnerabilities starting to take root. Uh, I was involved in the setting up of our first uh, high-tech crime unit in the UK, in London, and we pulled together experts from law enforcement, from the security intelligence services, from the military, and there were about 35 of us that started that unit, and our mission was to combat organized crime on the internet. And we very quickly bumped into the Russians online, um, and we, we learned over the years 2000 to 2005 and 6 that there are two groups of hostile nation states out there generally, um, and because I'm not in politics, I can just say it as it is. <laughs> Uh, we have the Russians, who want our money. And we have the Chinese, who want our intellectual property. Okay, generally speaking, that's the theme. Um, and as time has gone on, uh, the tools that are, are at their disposal uh, are enabling the growth of these attacks to be more and more successful. And there are different types of actors out there. So we have nation states to worry about. Uh, and if you are a company that is developing fantastic products, such as I have seen in Kaputskwa, then you are liable, you are on the target range for hostile nation state action. Now, those are very difficult to defend. Um, the industry has a buzzword called advanced persistent threats, but effectively, if you are being targeted by the Chinese or by the Russians, then you will need to work very hard 
at defending yourself. So that's at one extreme end of the spectrum. At the other, you have the boys and girls out there who are technically able and they just want to see if they can get into your network for fun. Okay, and I remember in my early days of law enforcement, we made an arrest um, at the request of the FBI. We arrested a gentleman called Gary McKinnon. And in, in a flat in North London, he had a couple of computers and a lot of uh, intellect. And uh, it was not long after September 11 attacks in the US. In fact, two weeks after. Uh, bad news for McKinnon because he thought he would try and break into servers, government servers in the United States. And he hacked uh, NASA, he hacked the Department of Defense, he hacked the Navy, uh, and just about every other institution. Um, and they thought, the Americans, um, have we any Americans in the room? Hands up. Okay, they thought, being a little bit paranoid, we don't have any Americans in the room, uh, that uh, they were under attack from some uh, terrorist group or some intelligence group. But no, this was a young man in his flat in London. And how did he manage to do that? Well, they had NT servers with password admin admin. Or admin 1234. It wasn't very difficult for him with some very basic tools. So... I'm sitting in, in, in London with law enforcement. The FBI turn up and say, we want you to arrest this guy. We've tracked him down through your good services with GCHQ. We know who he is. We know where he is. Please go and execute that warrant. So, OK, we did, because that's how police officers work. Um, but I sat down with the guys from the FBI, who were good friends, a fellow called um, Gibson at the time. And I said, aren't you folks just a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> I mean, here you are, arresting a young man. Yes, he, he, he you know, entered your systems, but your security was so poor that this should be more about how you defend yourself than worrying about a young man in a flat in London, because I can tell you, he's not a subversive, he's not a terrorist, he's not an intelligence actor, and so on. But those are the sorts of people that are out there now able to attack your companies. And since the Snowden revelations, you remember that, and subsequent leaks from Wiki and so on, we now have very sophisticated tools built by the NSA to help them intrude into foreign companies, even friendly foreign companies. Um, and now these tools are in the hands of people who have the technical ability to use them to exploit. So if you take one message away from what I have to say today, I would say please, please just realize that we are all under attack and we are all under threat. And that if you're not compromised already, then the chances are you will be tomorrow. Okay? If we look on it like that, then we have to learn to defend ourselves. So now we're into this and th th this photograph is very much like part of the movie that we saw for the industrial sector in Kapuskwa. This is precisely what we can specialize in here in Kapuskwa, and that is the security of embedded control systems where they apply to the operation in manufacturing processes. This is a great specialization for Kapuskwa and could set us above and beyond many other parts of the world. And like Gillette, who want to be the best at selling razor blades, okay, the number one quality razor blade manufacturer in the world, that's their mission, and they are, then Kaputskwa's Advanced Cybersecurity Center could be the number one specialist in getting this piece right in terms of cyber defenses. So there we have the Industrial Revolution, and I haven't got much time left if we're keeping to time, which I'd like to. The International Cybersecurity Protection Alliance, we started in 2010, 2011, working with companies, governments, 
and law enforcement on cybercrime. Some time ago, we thought we would look forward to the year 2020 to imagine what cybercrime would look like. So we carried out some studies around the world and we built some scenarios. And the outcome we, was a report which we gave to two different companies. And we said, please make us a little video encapsulating the results of this study so we can look forward to 2020 and think about what we are going to receive then in terms of cybersecurity. And I wanted to share with you very briefly a little video that was put together and this is a look into 2020 and let's hope it works. Technology has already added so much to our... I wonder if I could get some help from our technical people to run the movie, please. Thank you. Okay, folks, we, uh, we ran this last night in here, would you believe, and it was very successful, but unfortunately there was no one in the room to watch it. So um, I'll wait until our friends upstairs get the, the PowerPoint back. I don't know, sometimes it's easy to see the future. I was talking to Ainoa the other night about using technology in presentations. And I remember the day Bill Gates launched Windows 7 and he got the blue screen of death. Do you remember that? Um, I know how he feels. I wanted next to take you through uh, a view of what's happening in terms of cyber attacks around the world. Just to, to give a view with some statistics about um, what other countries are facing and the maturity of those company, countries. Um, but whilst we wait for this, if you just take my word for it, I can tell you what the result is, okay? There aren't many countries in the world who have gripped the cybersecurity issue well enough. Okay, so the maturity, and I refer to reports from IBM, from Ponemon, from Accenture, and here we are back. And the end result of all of those studies, and a very good report by Cisco, is that in fact, we're all pretty much at the same point in time. Okay, so we're not secure enough, we're not mature enough in our security, and therefore we've got quite a lot to do. And I would say, as far as Kaputskwa is concerned, that you are no further behind and no further forward than many other countries in the world. So this is a great time to start getting it right. So I talked about advanced persistent threats. Let's have a quick look at something that might be relevant. I've got 22 seconds left. From the dark side, we've heard about the dark web. This is a view of some actual attacks happening. So in one particular group, they have the capability to scan an entire country's IP address range, okay? Identify all of the IP addresses that are vulnerable and then launch attacks at them, automated. This is on the dark web. It was closed down about a year ago, but they're back again. This is blanket cyber carpet bombing of IP addresses. And just to gauge the audience, can anyone put your hand up if you know about IP version 6? Just put your hand up. Okay. So, um, technically, 
we were running out of IP addresses, allocations, so the boffins made IP version 6, and it's now called the Internet of Things. And uh, a very eminent scientist explained to me, he said, think about having an individual IP address for every grain of sand on the planet. And you connect a device, or you have the ability to do so, to every grain of sand on the planet. That's where we're moving with IoT, and that's why we haven't got much time to get this right. Because with the explosion of connected IP addresses to devices, we have an explosion of cybercrime and cyber attacks coming our way. So we really have to gear up very quickly. This is a, a live take from uh, the bad guys on the dark web interacting with one of their buyers. And here they're selling logins and access to bank accounts. Okay, and that's as a result of that carpet bombing I talked about. They have attacked IP addresses, they've compromised systems, they have stolen the credentials, and now they're up for sale on the dark web. These are some results that you can see from Accenture's cost of cybercrime. I won't, I won't bore you with the statistics, but it was just painting a picture. This is some reaction from security professionals around the world as to where they see the categories of main threat coming from. And I'm sure that uh, Gary and his team will happily share this presentation with everyone. Uh, it's, it's, it's there, and the references are easy to find. We talk about developing a strategy for risk mitigation. One of the things I think would be great for the, the new Advanced Cybersecurity Center to, to do is to help promote effective leadership, policy, protocols, tools, training in the area of prevention and detection. We don't have to worry about offensive cyber operations. That's not our job. That's the job of our governments. We just need to be able to defend ourselves very well and recognize that we need to do that immediately, the day after tomorrow. Please, if you don't know whether your company is compromised, speak to some of the technical security companies here uh, in the hall and, and ask them to carry out a vulnerability assessment. Okay, anybody here had a vulnerability assessment done in their company in the last three months? <gasps> Only two, three, four, okay. But no, you, you've got to stop. You can't put your hand up now. That's too late. Okay, so it's a bit like going to the doctor and saying, I haven't been feeling very well. Can you tell me? Just do a quick assessment, uh, a well-man test for John Lyons. I'd prefer not to. But the vulnerability scan of your IP range will very quickly, in about less than an hour, depending on how much equipment you have, will identify in red, amber, and green where your vulnerabilities are or where they are not. OK? So you don't have to trust anyone in the company to tell you how vulnerable you are. Just do the scan. Get one of the companies here to do that for you, very quick and easy, and it will present you with a very truthful picture of how the state of your enterprise is, no matter how big or small. So please, when you get back tomorrow, Order one up, get it done. It's very low cost. If they ask you for more than 100 euros, come and see me. Um, but it will give you a report, an automated report on, on the health of your company. And then we can start from there. Yeah? I'll, I'll move on with these because you can look at these at your leisure. Um, and I'm not even going to play the last movie because whilst the Kanoko movie was embedded, 148 megabits worth, so I didn't have to go onto the internet. My final movie's on the internet, so I'm not even going to bother with that. But I will refer to it uh, in a follow-up with you so that I can share it with you. Um, phishing. We all know about phishing, yes? Anybody here not know about phishing? Okay. 
Uh, phishing is this, um, again, the spam is sent out. There's a malicious code on the end of the message. And as you click on it because you're interested, then if you're not secure, you will be compromised. And this is a list of the message summary that people will send you. So it's a purchase order. It's an invoice for payment. It's a delivery notice. It's a shipping quotation. Um, and it's all too easy for our people to click on that. And if we don't have the security in place, they will be compromised. I want to take you, just before I leave, to uh, a slide which is worth looking at. And it's about the preventative nature of what we can do. And these are about alerts that have not been investigated. So, you know, your systems tell you you've been compromised and 44% aren't even investigated. Why are we not getting things done here? The budget constraints, compatibility issues, and so on. So there's lots of reasons why you can't do something, but too many companies would rather pull out a slide like this and explain why they can't, rather than just get on and do it. Because getting the basics right is not expensive, I can assure you. If you dispute that, I can give you a list of them. And you can go off and do them yourselves tomorrow. It's not difficult. And some of the challenges ahead for the industrial sector, despite and I have to remember, just because I've been doing this for a long time, doesn't mean to say everybody's with me. Education, awareness, and training is vitally important to cyber defense for the future in your company. The complexities of securing these embedded systems is something we have to work on together. Identifying some cybersecurity standards and certifications that are internationally recognized is a good thing to do. And watching after the weaknesses in your supply chain is another issue, because even if you defend yourself very well, if you're sharing your data with third-party companies who are not secure, then you'll be attacked that way. And the top threats to watch for? In Kapuskwa, very much the same as anywhere else in the world, I have to say. Um, ransomware. Uh, anybody here not know about ransomware? Okay, we're all good on that. Um, the problem is that if you don't have any bitcoins, uh, you're going to have to scramble around to pay the fine. And even if you do pay the fine, you may not get your systems back. Okay, so it's a, it's a dicey thing to do. Just don't respond, defend, okay, respond. Make sure that your backups are done every day at least, and make sure you don't infect the backup while you're trying to get the response right, okay? Mining cryptocurrencies, well, this is a new development. Um, they're basically stealing through spam and compromise they're stealing the power of your machine to help mine cryptocurrencies. It's almost like a DDoS attack. And distributed denial of service hasn't gone away. Okay? Ransomware dropped off last year, but it's coming back again with new variants. And DDoS is still an issue. And if you're connected to a two-third tier broadband provider, then someone else who's attacked will take you down as well. So be sure you've got enough connectivity. This is the top 20 charts of the controls that you can implement in your business to become more secure. And again, this is the sort of information that we'll be sharing with you in the days and months and years ahead. And uh, that's it. I'm not even going to take you to the trailer. I, I've probably overspent my time. Thank you very much for listening. And we'll deal with some questions later in the session. Thank you very much.